Hey guys, so I was starting a new video sharing my unpopular opinions about Team Fortress 2, and as I was jotting down this list of opinions, I realized that more than half of them involved war paints. Now that wouldn't really make for an interesting video since there's not much variety in opinion topics, so instead of going through with that video idea, I just decided to focus solely on unpopular opinions regarding war paints. And just as a quick disclaimer, this video is very opinionated, so if you disagree with anything I say, that's totally fine. I just wanted to show you guys my personal views on certain war paints. And with that out of the way, let's get right into my unpopular opinions on war paints in TF2. My first unpopular war paint opinion is that the Winter 2017 war paint collection is not the best war paint collection in the game. Don't get me wrong, most of the war paints in this collection are great, and most of them in the collection are among some of my favorites in the game. However, I could easily pass on a handful of these war paints like Hana, Uranium, Cabin Fevered, and a few others, since I personally just don't want to use them in game. And these specific war paints aren't even bad, it's just that I don't see myself going out of my way to buy and use these skins. As an extra tidbit, I do like a lot of the war paints in this collection, with my favorites including Hazard Warning, Geometrical Teams, and Bomber Soul. So in the end, it is a solid war paint case, but with the amount of war paints in this case being ones that I wouldn't use myself, I just don't see this war paint collection as being the best one in the game. What the heck? Now since I just talked about the Winter 2017 war paint collection, you may have noticed that I didn't even mention Damascus and Mahogany, which is one of the most beloved war paints in the game. Well that's because it ties directly in with my second unpopular war paint opinion, being that Damascus and Mahogany is just a little too boring. Now I do like the colors used in this war paint, and I think that the texture work was executed very well. But looking past those two factors, the war paint itself is just... boring. I think maybe if there was a tertiary texture as well, it might give D&M a little more oomph, but I'm not really sure what would make a good tertiary texture in the first place. So overall, Damascus and Mahogany is a good war paint, but I don't personally consider it one of the superior war paints we've seen so far. This next opinion is a little more difficult to explain, but I'll try my best. The Autumn Mark II war paint base is superior to the anodized Aloha war paint base. If you don't already know, all war paints added after Jungle Inferno have been made using a quote unquote war paint base. This means that a new war paint can be created by replacing each individual texture file from a pre existing war paint with a new one. Anyway, when Jungle Inferno came out, one of the war paints added was anodized Aloha. This specific war paint features a standard primary texture, a gradient based secondary texture, and exposed metal on certain parts of the weapon. This war paint served as a base for many future war paints, including cream corned, secretly serviced, and team serviced. Now, besides anodized Aloha, the Autumn Mark II war paint was also added during Jungle Inferno. It also included a standard primary texture, a gradient based secondary texture, and would you guess it, exposed metal on certain parts of your weapon. However, what Autumn Mark II does differently, and better in my opinion, is that it changes where the primary and secondary textures appear on your weapon. The best example to demonstrate this difference would be on the shotgun. With Anodized Aloha, the barrel and receiver of the shotgun feature this exposed metal, while the force stock, pistol grip, and ejection port use the primary texture. Meanwhile, the magazine tube uses the gradient texture to add some unique flair to each different seat of the war paint. On the other hand, the Autumn Mark II does things a little bit differently. It still shows exposed metal on the receiver, but in contrast, the barrel also displays the primary texture, while the force stock displays the gradient texture too. It's not the most noticeable difference, but I personally think that most war paints using the anodized Aloha base look way better using the Autumn Mark II war paint. Getting back into the topic of entire war paint collections, this opinion here contrasts with my second opinion based on the Winter 2017 war paint collection, as I believe that the Summer 2023 war paint collection is actually the best one we've received. And yes, like I previously mentioned, I do love a handful of war paints in the 2017 collection, and I also think that the majority of them actually look pretty good. However, there's not a single war paint in the 2023 collection that I don't like. I think they're all great. Even Deadly Dragon, which I would politely consider my least favorite war paint in this collection, still looks great in my opinion. In fact, each war paint in this collection is so good that choosing a least favorite was actually really difficult. 
One last thing I wanted to talk about regarding this collection was how a lot of people say that this war paint case had little variety, as many claim that the secretly serviced, steel brushed, and mechanized monster war paints are all quote unquote silver war paints that look the same. And while I think secretly serviced is more gray than silver, steel brushed and mechanized monster look different enough to me, so at least I'm still able to pick what type of silver my gun will look like. So to all of the workshoppers who made these war paints, good job. They all look great. And there you have it, my unpopular opinions regarding TF2's war paints. Remember, opinions are very personal and vary from person to person, so it's also important to respect what others think of war paints in TF2. Thank you all so much for watching. Are there any opinions you agreed or disagreed with? Are there any opinions of your own that you'd like to share? Leave them down in the comments and hopefully we can have a discussion down there. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.